Tropical Depression 18 forms this Monday afternoon, November the 4th, 2024. This is likely to become our next tropical storm and hurricane as it moves generally to the northwest at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. And in fact, could become a hurricane right after it passes over the Cayman Islands or very near the islands and approaches a hurricane as it moves over western Cuba and then reemerges out into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico as potentially a hurricane. Now looking at the latest GOES-16 RGB false color satellite imagery provided by CyclonicWX.com and we can see with what Tropical Depression 18 looks like here on the satellite imagery perspective. We got deep convection with intense banding futures trying to wrap all the way around here of the circulation. We got northerly winds here. We got southerly winds here. So what we end up having is a circulation probably located somewhere over here where I've circled this in yellow. And this is beginning to show signs of organization. When we get all this deep convection that tries to wrap all the way around and is able to mix out that drier air, we tend to get an inner core structure that does try to develop here. So far, we don't have any indications of that right now, but you never know with systems that are this small, things could um, quickly escalate as this deeper convection is able to wrap around the western side of the circulation a little easier than a broader circulation is. For reference, here's Jamaica over here. Here is a Haitian Peninsula, and here are the Cayman Islands. Now, the good news about today's video is we were able to get a recon mission out into the system this afternoon, and on their first pass, they did find that pressures were initially at 999 millibars, and then in their second fix through the system, pressures have fallen to 997, so we have lost a couple of millibars in pressure, and that means the system is slowly organizing, and technically in this sense, it is intensifying when you get falling pressures, but the wind field doesn't really reflect that just yet. We do have a broadening wind field still with winds anywhere between 20 to 30 knots. I'm assuming winds would be strongest on the eastern side because the system is generally moving in this general direction. So our strongest fat side is going to be located on the northeastern and eastern quadrants where they are estimating they have found winds here of about 30 to 35 miles an hour. Therefore, the National Hurricane Center has begun initializing advisories on this with pressures, again, 997 998 millibars with winds of about 35 miles an hour. It is moving to the north, northwest at around 9 miles per hour. Moving pretty much due north at this point to be specifically at 9 miles an hour. Now when looking at the National Hurricane Center here, you can see that the Cayman Islands, including Grand Cayman, are under a hurricane warning at the moment with winds that are expected to be about 70 to 75 miles an hour. So if you're under a hurricane warning, you needed to be taking this pretty seriously because hurricane conditions are expected. That means significant flooding, heavy rainfall, and damaging hurricane force winds are anticipated. Jamaica is now under a tropical storm warning, so that means tropical storm conditions are expected. Not only that, if you're in western Cuba, you are now under a hurricane watch, which means hurricane conditions are possible. Regardless of intensity here, significant impacts including significant flooding, heavy rainfall, storm surge flooding, and damaging hurricane force winds are anticipated over much of the population here that I've circled out here in black. So you need to keep that in mind. And it looks like Wednesday morning and a Wednesday night, it's going to be making the crossing over the island of youth and western Cuba and then re-emerging out into the Gulf of Mexico where it is expected to weaken, but weakening it by itself is not necessarily a good thing because impacts such as rainfall impacts and flooding could spread well north and away from the system. Looking at the tropical storm wind probabilities here, you can see for western Cuba, there is a 60 to 70 percent chance of tropical storm force winds in your area. Also, the Cayman Islands, there's a 70 percent chance of tropical storm force winds in your location, and these tropical storm force winds will arrive by Tuesday morning through Tuesday night. The further north you go, it gets later, but in general, anywhere in this orange and red colors needs to be really monitoring the system because that means chances are increasing for tropical storm force winds for a given area. There is also a non-zero chance for tropical storm force winds potentially for the west coast of Florida and the deep south of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and also the panhandle of Florida. Now, when taking a look at the rainfall totals expected here with 
Tropical Depression 18, you can see for southern Jamaica where we get that orographic effects where warm moist air gets forced over these mountainous terrain of Jamaica, you're looking at 8 to maybe 12 inches of rainfall. That is significant. Even so, you're not going to get a hurricane here or get a direct impact of this system. You're going to get indirect impacts such as banding futures, some intense rainfall over those mountainous terrain. The northern end of Jamaica may only see about a couple of inches of rain, but not only that, if you're in the Cayman Islands, such as the, uh, I call them the sister or, or the twin islands, you might see a, up to about four to six inches of rain. And then if you are in western Cuba, yeah, where you are under that hurricane watch, you might see anywhere between two inches all the way to as much as six inches of rain. So now let's get into the details of this video, looking at our global computer American GFS model, simulating and forecasting tropical depression 18. Will it become our next hurricane? And the answer is yes. I'm already letting you know that here because what you're about to see is a pretty intense compact intercore structure that does try to develop. So looking at the model here, um, some really intense rainfall. Look at Jamaica right in there. We'll be doing some zooming in here so you can see that. Jamaica going to get clobbered here with heavy rainfall, strong winds. And this would be for tomorrow morning. So for election day, I know Jamaica doesn't uh, is not part of the election. But in general, Tuesday is election day here on the YouTube channel. And therefore, um, we won't have a video out tomorrow but if needed, if there's an emergency update, we will have to provide that tomorrow. As far as it looks, doesn't seem likely at the moment unless something really big changes. But once this leaves Jamaica by Tuesday afternoon, the system could undergo some pretty extensive deepening, perhaps. So we go down to uh, 994, that is all the way down to 979, and then 977 millibars. That's some pretty good deepening by Wednesday morning. A day later, we go literally from the high 900 millibar range all the way down to the mid 970s. And this has been modeled really well on the GFS, showing a stronger system perhaps moving over Western Cuba. And this would be really bad news. There would be significant flooding here, big impacts. And then not only that, look at this. Moisture from the system could arrive into, say, Florida, as well as Georgia and Alabama. Yeah, you don't need a direct impact to get a significant heavy rain event for these areas. It does look likely, as this goes to the north, you can see some of the very intense rain colors here. Yellows and reds indicates a moderate to heavy rainfall. And then it looks like it breaks away there. And then um, especially over here, over Tennessee, could get quite a bit of rainfall. Even so, you're not being impacted by a tropical depression or storm. Now, by Saturday morning, November the 9th, here on the YouTube channel, you can see moderate heavy rainfall is expected to make landfall in that circulation there in southern Alabama and Mississippi around that Saturday time frame. And unfortunately, I won't be live streaming on this because I have a birthday party that I am going to be hosting here, not on the YouTube channel, but actually in real life. So I will not be available at all. Actually, you know what? I might be able to do a very early morning video if necessarily, but no live stream. Hopefully, I don't need a live stream on this. Hopefully, it doesn't become a big problem at all because if it does, I don't know what else to do other than we may have to squeeze something in. And then after that, that makes landfall and it falls apart by November the 10th timeframe. But it looks a lot different on the WARF model. This is the H-WARF or the Hurricane Weather Research Forecasting model that specifically specializes in hurricane forecasting. And we can see that the system and what you're looking at here is these teal colors. This is a lot of moisture. These browner colors are drier air. And when we go forward, in time, you can see that it moves over Jamaica. That's what's going to bring in some heavy rainfall, strong winds, and flooding. We already talked about that. A lot of big impacts. In fact, that's not enough. Let's actually zoom in because these areas here are going to get a lot of rainfall. Look at There is Jamaica for reference. I hope you all can see that here on the map. Boy, getting tons and tons of rain. And then as we uh, move forward, here are the Cayman Islands. So this would be for Tuesday afternoon. So more like early Tuesday morning for Jamaica, Tuesday afternoon 
for the Cayman Islands. And then eventually, once this gets into, say, uh, portions of Cuba, like the Island of Youth near there, 970 millibars. So that's a pretty intense tropical storm, or if not even a hurricane. And yeah, you can see the purple there showing us a intense hurricane perhaps that could or that will likely make landfall somewhere in western Cuba. And this would be by Wednesday early morning afternoon hours of November the 6th. And this reemerges out into the Gulf of Mexico where it might uh, begin to reorganize, maybe intensify much further into a strong hurricane maybe. We'll see about that. And this holds together until last minute. And then it kind of just gets whisked away and you just get these banding futures similar to Marco when it moved in this general direction. It got decoupled due to the vertical wind shear, which is being sampled by much of the models at this point to be in the northern Gulf of Mexico to be over 50 to 60 knots, which will tear this system up easily. Now, if you found this information really helpful, detailed and informative on Tropical Depression 18, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get latest updates and information on this tropical depression. Hit the like button if you haven't liked the video yet. And also leave a comment in the section below this video and check out my Twitter page for more updates on this tropical depression. But anyways, thank you all for watching and I might see you back here tomorrow. But because it's election day, I might need to take the day off because that's on the top of my mind watching our president. Who's going to win, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? We will have to find that out for yourselves by watching mainstream news media. But anyways, thank you for watching.